Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. Today we are in Joshua chapter 16, 17, and 18. And tomorrow we're going to be in chapter 19, 20, and 21. And there's a reason why they broke it up this way. We'll talk about that later. It starts out with Joseph's inheritance and what he received. And then with Ephraim's inheritance and what they received. In verse 10 of chapter 16, it says, However, they did not drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer. So the Canaanites still live in Ephraim today, but they are forced laborers. So instead of driving them all out or killing them all like God told them to, they let them stay, but they used them as slaves. Hmm. Interesting. Chapter 17 starts out with West Manasseh's inheritance. We already heard about East Manasseh's inheritance. And then... We get to this little little dab about the daughters. Now, this is in verse 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, and 6, essentially. Now, although the daughters did not normally inherit land, they did receive a dowry, usually, instead of land. But this is something that Moses allowed as a special stipulation. We remember reading about this in Numbers chapter 36. Verses 1 through 13, in the absence of any sons. He did require, though, that these women marry within their own tribe so that the land would not pass out of it. And if they decided to marry outside of their tribe, the land would go to the next male relative of their current tribe and they would have to go with their husband and live with their tribe. They would no longer be a part of this tribe. So that's how that worked out. So the land could not transfer tribes even though it was given to a woman who may marry outside of the tribe. Land had to stay put. Verse 12 says, The descendants of Manasseh could not possess these cities because the Canaanites were determined to stay in this land. However, when the Israelites grew stronger, they did impose forced labor on the Canaanites, but they, again, did not drive them out. Hmm. Then we talk about Joseph's additional inheritance. And here we are, at chapter 18 with land distribution at Shiloh. Shiloh is a very important place. Now, it says here, verse 1, The entire Israelite community assembled at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting. Now, this is the first mention of the tent of meeting in the book of Joshua. And Shiloh, it lays, lays to the south of Sechem and was situated in the middle of the earliest settlement of Israel in the hill country. It would remain a center for Israel's worship until the time of Samuel in 1 Samuel chapters 1 through 4. We'll read about. Then verse 4 here says, Appoint for yourselves the three men from each tribe. I'll send them out. They're going to go. They're going to survey this land. They're going to write a description of it for the purpose of their inheritance and return to me then they are to divide it into seven portions now this is for the remaining tribes who have not had land distributed to them yet and joshua says i will cast lots for you here casting lots now some people feel that casting lots is like rolling the dice or it's pulling the short straw it's not really what casting lots were back then it's not rolling the dice either casting lots were actually and a lot of times it was white smooth stones that are put into a cup but there was usually one stone that was black or one stone that was a different size or a different color like one and like a bigger one that's bigger than the other or one that's a specific shape that they call out but if it was a black one that's where we get the expression today of being blackballed or pushed aside, so to speak, when people are voting and they would vote with, with little white balls nowadays. And if somebody puts a black ball in, then you would be eliminated from whatever it was they were voting for. Now, when they do cast lots, though, back in biblical times, each person took a stone out. And after they were shaken up, and the one who received the black one was either the guilty party or they were the one that was going to receive a certain land. Like I said, we're drawing lots for this land. And then they draw, and then the person that got the black stone would get that land there is typically how it will work. And if it was a dispute that was to be settled, the same process 
was involved and the guilty party got the black stone or the party it just depended or the party that was going to get something got the black stone they also use this for um, decisions about priestly duties and dividing up land like we're talking about that they would frequent frequently have a symbol or a name for the tribe or the priest that was mixed together with the others or whichever lot came out at a particular time a decision was based upon that there was no chance for the lot being cast for the wrong person or the wrong tribe because god is sovereign even over the lots now even though this was a pagan ritual it carried over into judaism and these are some possible lots that maybe what a lot would look like when they were casting lots they would have these stones with different symbols carved in them and whoever got the certain symbol would get the certain area of land or whatever they were drawing lots for is what would happen so that's about drawing lots that's that's what it meant then we can move on to benjamin's inheritance and what he inherited in benjamin's cities all the different cities that benjamin inherited along the way and that's it for today and this episode of the bible in one year with the preacher's husband i hope to see you tomorrow for another episode remember joshua 19 20 and 21 all right now we were preparing for the levites multiple times in this these three chapters it said but the levites aren't to get anything levi's not to get anything um this is in preparation for tomorrow's chapter 21 because in chapter 21 we're going to see what the levites actually did get i hope to see you then hit that like button and subscribe button and of course click the little jingle bell so you can get notified every time i upload a video we'll see you tomorrow